The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone. My name is Catherine. I'll be your webinar facilitator today. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Step Into a New Year with a New Plan to Increase Your Sales. To get a new result, you must have a new plan webinar. As a brief reminder, all lines are currently on mute to prevent background noise. If you have any questions during the presentation, go ahead and type them into your chat box. We'll be happy to answer at the end of the webinar. This morning, it's my pleasure to welcome Kathy Brandon, VP of Operations with CI Web Group. As you know, CI Web Group is one of our preferred vendors, helping dealers be more successful out in their own business. Uh, Kathy, you may now begin the webinar. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kathy Brandon. I am the VP of Operations for CI Web Group. And today, we're going to talk about <clears throat> what strategies and what thinking and, and what technologies you guys need to understand for 2018. The digital marketing landscape has become somewhat complex for the average business owner. You guys are now expected to run your business. You're now expected to be marketing experts and now you're expected to be digital marketing experts on top of that. So what Lisa and Catherine and Jennifer Bagley wanted to do this morning is we wanted to get on the phone with you and we wanted to talk to you guys and have a conversation about how you guys want to think. How do you guys understand the new technology that is coming into play when all of you guys are faced with making a decision on your digital marketing partner? And it's, it's more important now than ever before to make the right partnership. Um, the days of having somebody launch your website, somebody else do your search engine optimization, another vendor come in and do your Facebook marketing, although you can do that, the technology and the landscape of digital marketing has changed so much that you have to be very careful and you have to understand technology to a degree to make a good decision for your company on who your partner is. So what we're going to talk about today and what I hope to help you guys understand is some of the more complex pieces of technology. And so what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about doing the right things in the right order at the right time, which Jennifer talks about all the time. And we're going to jump in feet first into how it all works. And I want to speak to you guys first about your thinking. And I'm not going to take a, an enormous amount of time around your thinking, but I want you guys to understand I ran a digital marketing agency for 10 years. And one of the big challenges that I had being a business owner is making the right choice and keeping up with all the technology for my business. I had to stand as an expert and a partner in everyone else's business. And sometimes that didn't leave me time to be able to sit back and think to sit back and make correct choice for who my partnerships were. And so what I had to do was I had to change my thinking about three to four years into my business. Um, I had to start creating different thinking habits that actually produce results. And what that means is I had to surround myself with wise counsel and, and partners who not only could do a good job on the implementation side, but they also could come to the table and they could explain these concept, complex concepts that I, don't, I didn't have time to do all the research. Even though I was in digital marketing, I still didn't have time to do every piece of research. And so what we wanted to do today is we wanted to help you guys understand that we understand. We understand that you're not digital marketers. You didn't choose to be in that business, but yet it's being force fed to you guys and so you're having to take the time. So we want to stand in as your partner and help you guys with the thinking, the actions, the decisions. And so what we're going to do is let's talk a little bit about the thinking, right? Most people are automatically behind the curve technology wise. And it's not your fault. You guys get into HVAC because you want to help people's lives be comfortable. You didn't get into HVAC so you could make choices on Facebook or you could make choices on a website or God forbid you make choices on key phrases that go into your SEO behind your website so that people could find you on Google when they type in air conditioner broke near me. And so what we need to do is we need to change our thinking around the results. 
And so we have to change our thinking to from a place of, oh gosh, I'm going to have to think about that technology where technology is actually your partner and your friend. And it's not a matter of you have to think about technology. It's a matter of you want to think about technology because it's going to keep you from working so hard for the leads. You're going to have a mechanical partner in your life that actually pops leads out the top of the funnel. And so I, I, what I want to offer you guys the opportunity today to do is to actually stop thinking about technology as something you have to do and think of technology as something you want to do because it's almost like if you have the right technology, you have just hired a whole team of marketing people that are actually generating leads for you. And so what that leads itself to when you change your thinking like that, and especially when you haven't made the choice to be a digital marketer, you've made the choice to be in a whole different business, you're going to be uncomfortable. You're just going to be uncomfortable because you don't want to do it. You want to focus on what you started your business to do. And so I need you guys, and you're going to have to get used to being uncomfortable. If you own your own business, you're probably used to being uncomfortable to a certain degree anyway, because the best way to grow yourself as a human person and to grow your life is to own your own business. You'll be able to see everywhere you break apart. And so I want to offer you guys the opportunity to understand that if you're uncomfortable, if you're being stretched, if you're being pulled, that's a great place to be. That shows you're growing and you're on the way to profitability. And so I want your trigger in your mind to change. You know, when you're feeling pressed and you've got these technology people coming to you asking you to make a decision and it makes you uncomfortable. I want you to feel inside yourself and I want you to say, oh my God, okay, I'm doing the right thing. The third piece is, and Jennifer talks about this. She's been talking about this for years. And the first time I heard her say, show up, suit up and participate, I thought it was golden. Um, we had separate companies. We were both in Dallas. We're both digital marketers. We're both going after the same target market. So we were, at, we were actually competitors in the space, but we never behaved like competitors. But I saw her post on Facebook and she was saying it to her team. And it was just one phrase, show up, suit up and participate. And that day I saw it, I was just having one of those moments that we all have as business owners where we come to work and we're just completely overwhelmed and we just kind of want to hide. <clears throat> and when that scrolled across my Facebook, I just kind of looked at it and I was like, you know, she's dealing with the same challenge as I am in business. But yet she woke up this morning and she showed up, she suited up, she participated and she also helped the rest of us be inspired. And so I want to offer you guys the opportunity to think about this. As a business owner, you automatically propel yourself into leadership, not only with your family, not only with the people in your business, but in your community. Every single person that doesn't have the courage to step out there and start their own business is watching you. And so what you don't realize about your impact in your universe, your impact in your community, is the people who talk to you and tell you how inspiring you are, those people are awesome because they're the ones telling you how great you are. But there is a whole host of people that you don't know about that are watching you be courageous, that are watching you be a trendsetter, that are watching you have the courage to make your dream happen. And by watching you, you are inspiring them, you are motivating them, and you are actually helping them step out into their dream. And so when Jennifer came to the table that day, and it was just a simple Facebook post, and I'm saying that so that you guys understand that social may be something you don't want to think about, but social changes people's lives, and it'll change your life. And so when Jennifer put that Facebook post out there, it made me sit up straighter that morning. I came into my business because my competition was standing strong in her business. And that is absolutely happening to you guys right now in your universe, whether you realize it or not. You may be sitting at your desk doing just your normal stuff and you may not see how you're impacting the rest of your community, but you are impacting every single person who watches you. And so you have to show up. You have to suit up. 
you have to participate because it's not just about earning profit for you and your family and taking care of your clients. It's about you guys creating an example for other people to follow their dreams. Then the third thing is so hard as a business owner, patience and progress minded, especially when it comes to technology. Technology can be the most infuriating thing in the world. It can take you from being the most confident, awesome, powerful person in your universe to feeling like a 10 year old child who's just learning how to, you know, do multiplication. Well, they're probably learning multiplication in first grade now, but patience and progress minded. And here's how to think about that kind of um, mindset, right? Is every type of growth and if you think about, I'll use the analogy of um, the earth, right? The earth is made up of layers. Well, so is your progress. As much as we would like to implement everything at one time, and the same thing with your customers, um, they, if, they may want to implement everything at one time, but there are other factors that come into play. You know, can they afford to implement everything at one time? Well, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Odds are no. And so with your customer base, you guys have to come back and you have to, you know, implement this in phase one. You have to implement this in phase two. You have to implement this in phase three. And so you guys are constantly going out to the field and you are helping your clients step into this place of patience. You're constantly helping your clients step into this place of progress, a layering effect of growth and getting comfortable. Well, you guys, with your technology, you have to go into that place as well because technology is built on layers. And so if you can take what you do for your customers and bring it into your business for technology, you guys will win the game in mindset. And I absolutely, if you guys have any questions whatsoever about anything I'm talking about throughout this, throw it in the chat because I absolutely want to hear your questions. I want to address anything that's going on for you. I want to talk about negative thinking habits that limit your results. Because in my years of, I launched my first website for the city of Las Vegas in 1998. I started my career at Microsoft, uh, went to a CPA firm for six years after Microsoft and then started my own business. And the only thing that has held me back in any success in my life, in my career, in my business, are, is negative thinking. And there are only four things that can totally mess you up in your thinking. And it's so easy to step into those habits. The first one, excuse me, I'm sorry. The first one is what we call the delayed launch and start. Most of us as business owners are not implementing everything that we need to implement. And so basically what that means is we're behind the curve and everybody and their uncle is behind the curve on technology because it's hard to stay caught up. And so basically what that means is the longer you wait, the further behind you are and the more you have to invest to catch up. And like I told you, technology is a layering effect. You know, as much as you want to launch that website, launch that social media advertising campaign, launch pay-per-click, launch a video, launch all these things, you can't do anything until you have a stable website that is actually coming up on search. That's always the first step of your platform. And so when you delay a launch, when you delay a start, you are pushing yourself even further behind the curve. And you can almost think that your competition is not waiting. Decision making. This one is huge. Every single business owner I have ever met in my life, including myself, have made this mistake. They hire friends, they hire family, and they hire fools. Who you hire in your company for the first five years may or may not be who can take your company into the next five years of your vision. And that is a reality. 
And so hiring friends, family, and fools will throw you directly into employee morale issues. Because if you have a family member who comes to work for your company in a role, and then you have somebody who's not a family member, who's not associated, who's not a friend that comes and works in your company, even if you treat those two people fair, that person that's not a family member is always going to feel like they're at a disadvantage no matter how you make them feel, no matter how well you treat them, no matter how much you treat them like family. They're not family. And I'm not saying don't hire family and friends. What I'm saying is be mindful of what you're adding to your company, the layer of complexity that you're adding to your company by hiring friends and family. On a loyalty element, it's beautiful because friends and family are typically more loyal than people from the outside. So it's a trade-off. And everybody who owns a business knows about trade-offs. And so it's fine to hire friends and family as long as you understand what you're also taking on on the back side of that. Same thing for not hiring family. Everything's a trade-off. Another thing that people need to think about and everyone needs to think about is choosing local providers. You know, and, and for a lot of reasons, it's nice to have some local person doing your website. At the same time, that local person is not going to be able to give you the global view of your industry because they're local. So they may be able to dominate for you local, but they're not always going to help you stay ahead of the industry shift in six months. They're not going to be able to help you stay ahead of the global shift that's happening in a year from now. A lot of decisions are made to decentralize your approach to technology. And so basically what that means is to outsource a whole bunch of things. Well, although that's great because you don't have to bring the staff in, you don't have to, you know, have desks for everybody to sit in. At the same time, when you have multiple vendor partners handling multiple pieces of your, of your technology, you are the project manager. You are the vendor manager. And if you have time to take on another full-time job, beautiful. But most people do not. So just when you're making those kind of decisions, instead of just looking at the financial piece of it, which we all as business owners <clears throat> look at the financial piece first. Can we afford this? What's smart? What, do, what does our budget hold? You also want to look at the other piece of it because most business owners don't even calculate their own time as an operating cost. Business owners are constantly starting over. They're constantly forcing your internal staff to understand and perform tasks that require an army. And so as a small business owner, and I did it in my business, everybody does it. So there's no shame on the game. You have one person doing five jobs. That's not going to work for anybody because we all know that one person can't do five jobs. So that person that has five layers of responsibility is only going to be able to do one proficient. The rest, they're always going to be behind. And you're never going to get ahead of your business. When you have one person doing five jobs, you're automatically disorganized. And then the most critical, pervasive thing that is happening in small business out there with regard to digital marketing is that no one is educating you guys around the order to implement. Most companies out there, and I can talk about it because I've been in digital marketing almost my whole career, is most companies just want to get you on a package plan. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what that means is that you're just going to say yes to the package because what you're being sold is a total solution. But where I want to help educate you today, and I'm going to get into that in just a few minutes, is I want you guys to understand the power of implementing in the right order. If you implement technology out of sequence, you're costing yourself time, you're costing yourself money, you're going to have to redo it, you're going to have to reorder it and you're losing money. You're losing market share and your competition. If they have a partner that's teaching them about sequencing and order, 
they are going to absolutely dominate over you every single time. And so that's one of the things that CI Web Group wants to make available to you. That's why we're partners. That's why we were selected as a preferred vendor. It's because we are dedicated to talking to you and, and partnering with you about the order so that you don't lose money, so you don't lose time, and you don't lose market share. <clears throat> I do want to talk about the next piece because I deal with this in web projects all the time. Is There is a concept in the universe with people who are not techie where when somebody sells you a website or sells you digital marketing, you guys say yes, you give us your credit card, and that we're supposed to totally understand everything that's supposed to be put on your website. We're automatically supposed to know how to customize your website to your unique business, to your unique industry, to your unique space in the market. Without your participation, we should just know. And what I want to do is I really want to break through that thinking. And the, what I want to say to you, and any time a technologist speaks to you, here is a red flag. If a technologist ever talks to you and says, hey, we're just going to cover anything, you don't have to deal with it. That's a red flag because there's no, <clears throat> there's no digital marketing vendor out there that is really going to do a good job for you that's not going to require you to participate. You are the expert in how you are unique in your marketplace. You are the only person who truly knows. So unless as your digital marketing partner, unless we are in communication with you on a regular basis, your projects are going to take longer. You're not going to launch on time. It's going to be problematic. You're going to look at your website and you're going to be like, what in the world? That's not my voice. Because there was no participation. And so I'm not fussing at anybody. I just want my job here today is to help you guys understand to the degree where you can allocate your time, you can allocate your budget, you can allocate your resources to a real partnership so that you absolutely have time in your life to focus on why you started your business. That leads me right into the next point. There is no one in the world who's going to be able to build a customized technology platform without you. And without you absolutely being on the calls. Now, you as the owner do not always have to be on the calls. If you have a resource in your company who understands you, understands the business, offload that technology project to that person and manage the person. Be involved in the big milestones on the project so that you're the person who approves it. But participate. The more you participate, the less work you have later. So let's talk about the technologies that are so confusing to everybody. Websites, Google, search engine optimization. Oh my goodness, I feel like I'm on the Wizard of Oz, right? Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Web design, Google and SEO, oh my. It's enough to make you crazy and not want to even think about technology. But today I'm going to try as hard as I can to break some of the more difficult things apart for you. I want to tease it apart and I want to give you guys a new way of thinking about some of this stuff. So everything is moving quicker. Everything. All of technology is moving quicker. Web designers are young kids now because they're the ones that are on the pulse of technology. They're the ones that are out there on the internet all the time, glued to their phone, doing Snapchats with little bunny ears on them. I mean, search engine optimization is not here to create your structure. What search engine optimization is here to do 
is to structure your website to the degree where Google can read you to the point where you are the choice when someone types in AC installation near me. Most people are not going to search for your name on the internet when they have a problem. And I'm going to say that again because that happens all the time. I've seen it since 1998. Customers will not, not new customers, they will not search for your name on the internet. They will not go to Google and, I, and say, I want such and such dot com. They will go to Google on their phone and say AC install, AC repair, heater repair, boiler repair. Consumers, human people search for the problem they want solved near them. Problem they want solved near them. And I want you all to write this down. I'm going to give you a formula to understand SEO for the rest of your life. So write this down. Search engine optimization equals cities plus services, plus reviews, plus recommendations from authority sites. If all four of those items you can check, yes, you will come up on search, you will dominate your market on search. Now, if you're not giving great service, that's a problem. If your customers hate you, that's a problem. But the formula itself for search engine optimization is cities plus services plus reviews plus recommendations from authority sites, local newspapers, local magazines, manufacturer websites. Just want to give you the secret to SEO in a way that you as the business owner can understand it. I could talk about SEO search ranking ad nauseum. What you guys as business owners need to understand is if your website pages do not have a city, if your website pages do not have a service, if you do not have good reviews, if you're not at a 4.5 or above with your reviews on Google, you will suffer and it doesn't matter how much money you throw at it you will absolutely suffer but once you understand the formula as a business owner you can understand how to play the game how to be in the market without just throwing money at it so i want to break it down okay and if you guys want to take notes and you want to have a deeper conversation absolutely one of the things that we do at ci web group is we will absolutely give you a full evaluation. All you have to do is just let us know at the end. And what we will do is we will go out and we will look at your website. We will look at your footprint online. And we will tell you exactly where the problems are and why you're not dominating. And then you as a business owner have all the information to make a good choice. So let's talk about the, the base, right? Let's talk about the foundation of your house. Jennifer uses the analogy of a file cabinet when she's talking about search and she's talking about how you need to organize cities and services into the Google file cabinet. Well, I'm going to take a different approach today uh, because you guys are in the home services, right? So I'm going to use an analogy that I used with some home services clients. Let's talk about a house. Your website structure, I'm not talking about your design. I'm not talking about your logo. I'm talking about what is the structure of your website. So let me throw out some items that I call them in the geek zone, right? Because as a business owner, you don't really care about all this stuff. You don't really want to know the definition of all these things that are up on my screen right now that you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the bucket that these things are in. Right. Uh, when you build a house, 
there are a lot of different things you have to do before the slab is poured, poured and before you can frame your house. And this is exactly what your website structure is. This is how to think about it. Your URL, your www, whatever, whatever dot com, that should call out to who you want to serve. That should absolutely be your business name. That should absolutely be a strategy, a well thought out marketing strategy. You can absolutely have your name, but you also could have other URLs that actually call out to what you really want to sell the most of or how you want to be known in the marketplace. And we can talk more about that. Just put a little star on your little paper about your URL and put a star beside it because that is absolutely a powerful conversation that we need to have. Your server's database, your code, your content management system, all of those things are super, super technical elements that you guys don't want to know the detail about because if you had to learn the detail of that, it would take you away from the reason that you owned your business, the reason you became a business owner in the first place. And so what you need to understand is the partner that you're leveraging to run the backend server that hosts your website. You've got a couple of choices in the marketplace. You've got what I consider the self-serve hosts, which is like the GoDaddies, the host monsters. I call those self-service because you get a really low price for somebody hosting your website, but you're gonna have to sit on hold and have multiple, multiple conversations with multiple, multiple tech support people if you have a security breach, if you have a plugin that goes awry, if you get hacked, if you get hickeyed by Google and get penalized. When you're working with a self-serve type of vendor, instead of a partner who is truly managing it, your time is what is going to be penalized. And like I said before, when we were in the thinking stage of the conversation, most business owners do not calculate their own labor time into the profitability of your company. And it absolutely matters. And so when you're making a decision on who is going to host and who is going to manage your back end, <clears throat> don't just look at dollars look at, okay, if something goes wrong, how long am I, or how long is my team gonna have to spend on the phone managing that vendor relationship to get the problem solved, as opposed to having a project manager, having an account manager, having a sales rep that actually can access the tech team. And those are all the decisions that you have to make. So it's not about price. Price is only a small factor when you're talking about who's going to manage the back end of your server. It's a matter of how much time is it going to take you to manage that vendor relationship. Layout of your design. I really want to have a powerful conversation around that. It is very, very important for your website to be nice looking. But it's even more important for your layout design to be on the most updated template that works with Google Analytics, that works with schema coding, that works with AMP. And if you don't know what I just said, you're like, I don't even know what she's talking about. I'm going to get to that in a minute because those are new technologies and nobody knows what they mean but yet you're being forced to make decisions on them. So with layout and design, it's not just about having a pretty website. It's about having the most, most update template. It's about having a content management system, which that's what WordPress is, by the way. It's called a content management system because it manages all the words, pictures, call to actions, all that's content. 
it manages it in conjunction with Google's requirements. And that's what WordPress says. So when somebody says, oh, are you using a content management system? You can say, oh, absolutely, yes. Because you know you're running WordPress. I've seen people with the ugliest websites known to man making a million dollars because they have the right back end system, because they always keep up, and because they always make sure that their back end is top notch on the cutting edge. Now, some of these people take a trade off. They're like, oh, well, I'm spending so much money on the back end, I don't really want to deal with the design element. Well, you really need to look at both. It's not a one or the other. It's not an either or mentality. It's a both. So you need the right partner that's going to absolutely take the time and own the project on your behalf. Code refinement, age, sitemap, robots, settings, security, integration, monitoring, monitoring, management. That is just a snippet of what goes on behind the scenes with just your website, just your search engine optimization. That's just a snippet. And so when I talk to you about a partner, or when Jennifer talks to you about a partner, or when Lisa talks to you guys about partnering, or your TSM talks to you about partnering, it's not just a money decision. It is absolutely a decision around who is going to save you the time and give you the wise counsel that's going to allow you to focus on selling equipment. Schema markup. I'm not even going to ask anybody if they know what this means because most people don't and you're not supposed to. This is the kind of technology that you absolutely should be relying on your partner for explaining to you in language that is great for you as the business owner. You don't have to know every single piece of this. You need to know enough to make a good choice on who you're paying your dollars to and who, what vendor you're managing. And so I'm just going to run through this real quick. I'm not going to spend an enormous amount of time on this. I'm absolutely available. And so is your entire sales team with CI Web Group. They will absolutely have this deeper conversation with you. So schema markup, here's how you think about it. Your websites have to evolve and stay current with what I call the Google Dragon. And that's the only way I know how to explain it in, I call it business owner speak. Google is a dragon that has to be fed. Google started out as a baby dragon and has grown up into almost a full grown dragon. Just like any being's evolution, the dragon changes over time because the dragon evolves. Well, that's exactly what's happening with Google. We have a dragon that's grown up. And so one of the latest advance, advancements within Google, it's called microdata code. And that's what's called schema markup. And basically what it is, is it's, its purpose is to inform search engines like Google about the intention of your content, which this is more complex than it was before. Before you could just throw any content out there that had cities and services on it, on a page and Google will rank it. That is totally not where the, the technology industry where Google is going in the future. Google wants you to have good content out there. So they want to know more than just AC repair. They want to know, is it an automobiles cooling unit? Is it a commercial business unit? Is it a residential home unit? And so we can use HVAC schema markup to let Google know that your AC repair is a residential service versus commercial. And so if I don't want to go any deeper than that because you guys don't truly need to know any more than that. If you guys can really take in this one paragraph that's on the slide, doesn't matter what digital marketing vendor you are speaking to, 
as a business owner, you will be able to have an intelligent conversation with that vendor. That vendor, if you can have this conversation with this paragraph, that vendor will make sure they need to be on top of their game to work with you because you're not a dummy. And you have somebody in your arsenal giving you great information. So whether you, you, know, you choose CI Web Group or whether you choose somebody else, our job is to make sure you're well educated so that you can make the right decision on your vendor and you can make the right decision on how you're going to spend your time in cash. The next one that's very difficult for people to understand that's a brand new technology out there is AMP. We call it AMP. Basically what AMP is, and I'm just going to read it to you because it's basically the best explanation I've seen yet. AMP pages receive a badge in Google search and it lets your visitors know that they're going to get an, an exceptional experience from you. And so MPs are engineered to load in less than a second. They use 10 times less data. And they deliver smooth, touch-friendly navigation, faster mobile experiences. Faster mobile experiences equal increased clicks, drive traffic better, create more revenue. AMP equals accelerated mobile pages. If your website does not come up quick on mobile, you lose the customer. I gave a presentation about five years ago to a group of people who uh, their focus was the mommy market. Their products and services helped moms. But yet a lot of these people with their education, they were selling CDs, they were selling this, they were selling that. Well, they weren't making it easy for that mom to know they were there to solve their problem. Because for a mom, for somebody who has a busy life, and for somebody who's not truly tech savvy on the computer, you can almost think that they're tech savvy on their phone. Like I know people that can barely log on to a computer, but they can tell me everything about their mobile phone. They can tell me everything about their tablet. They can run circles around usability with all those other tools. The world is going into phones. And so you have to make sure that you have the technology behind the scenes that not only makes your website move fast, makes your website come up in Google search, makes your website come up quickly for the consumer who's totally impatient, but now you have to be on somebody's mobile phone in the exact same way. AMP configuration is gonna help you get there without taking on a whole nother mobile project. And so it's very important. Now, anybody who's been in a web project, um, which most people have if they have a business, they have a website, most people have experienced this. When your website is about to go live, you start looking at it in all sorts of different browsers. So say you look at your website in Chrome, it looks beautiful. You go over to uh, Firefox, you go over to um, Safari, you go over to some of the other, other browsers and your website looks weird. Well, that's what's called cross-browser compatibility. And basically what that refers to is the ability of a website, an app, an HTML, um, in this slide it's called an HTML construct. Let me break that down for you. Um, a lot of times we will build what I call quick and dirty HTML functionality either into our website or into other tools that help us work with our processes better. So an HTML construct is almost like kind of a little quick and dirty app that helps you out. There are client side scripts that you guys will put into place to help function in an environment um, to provide its required features and to either downplay something that is not compatible to that other browser and upplay something that is compatible. So it just allows the user, the consumer who's browsing your website to be able to see the same brand, the same functionality across multiple browsers because we can't control how people are gonna look at us. We can't control what browser they're gonna use. So the, the digital marketing presence that we put out there in the marketplace has to 
serve the consumer. The consumer is only going to wait for your stuff for 30 seconds and then they're out and you've lost the opportunity right there. It's just that quick. Mobile responsive. This is brand new. It's been coming for quite some time. Now it's here and it's a requirement. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mobile responsive, it's the law. You have to develop a website for over a dozen phones, multiple technologies, multiple different devices. We've got phones, we've got iPads, we've got tablets, we've got, you know, Surface PCs. Um, we have so many different devices that that's almost a new challenge for digital marketing and for you as the business owner. You know, as a business owner whose specialty is not digital marketing, when somebody talks to you about mobile responsiveness, I can't even imagine what you guys are going through. I've seen it. I've been in offices where I start talking about this and I mean, their head just goes in their hands and they're just like, oh my God, Kathy, this is just too much for me to deal with. I didn't even get in the business to do technology, but now I have to make all these decisions on things that I just freaking want it to work. So I wanna break down mobile responsiveness for you. If you have a great vendor, you're not gonna see this. This will just be done. We do this on the back end. This is what we do. But not everybody is going to do that for you. And so it goes back to selecting the right vendor. So your mobile responsiveness is allowing your website to not only be viewed the same way across browsers, but it allows you to be seen the same way across devices. And so what that will, when you pick the right vendor who understands this, who is always ahead of the market by three to six months, a year, two years, you don't even have to think about this. But when you have to think about this, you want a partner who will make it the easiest choice for you instead of creating a situation where your hands, your head is in your hands and you're wondering why you're even having to think about it. And so when it comes to all these, these super tech, technical things, you want to make sure that you have a vendor partner who's taking care of you. But you also want to ask the question, if you're interviewing a digital marketing company to be your partner, keep this thought. When you go into a meeting with anybody who wants to come in and do your technology, you want to be able to speak to this intelligently. If you just read this paragraph and take in this paragraph, when you're having a conversation with a digital marketing person, you are absolutely going to make them be on their P's and Q's because you're going to know what you're talking about. Site maintenance is one of the most confusing things. And I talked a little bit about it earlier when we were talking about web hosting. And so I'm not going to spend an enormous amount of time on this, but I do want to give you the information that makes you powerful as a business owner. It kind of go back, goes back to that conversation we were having earlier. You know, you can hire an agency to manage the back end of your website, WordPress plugins, plugin updates, rebuild, security sweeps, patches, reconfiguration, uh, reinstallation of broken apps, plugins. Um, I was at Microsoft when um, Windows 95 was launched, Windows 98, um, Windows 2000. So I watched the world go from no PCs on your desk to using the internet to run almost a whole business. Um, and it was the most remarkable thing to watch and be a part of. Um, when I was there, I didn't understand how big of a change was happening in the world. I was just doing my job and it was just fun. Um, but hindsight being 2020, when I look back at that experience and I watch the way the world evolved as a result of the technology, what I understand now that things have changed. And the reason I talked to you about most of you guys are running office. Most of you guys are running Microsoft apps. 
Well, when I was at Microsoft, one of the break apart pieces for us was we would implement patches, upgrades, and sometimes they would break your whole system. Well, technology is not an exact science. And so sometimes you don't know that. Well, the reason I brought that up is I want you to relate it to WordPress. That still happens. There is no way for any company in the world to make an update to a program of any kind. WordPress is a software package just like Microsoft Word, just like Outlook, just like your email. It's all software. So with the base of a software package, it all operates the same. Whatever you buy is going to have to be upgraded, updated because technology changes. Well, sometimes when you apply an update and everybody's done it on their computer with Windows updates, is you apply the update, your system boots, and all of a sudden, sudden you have weird behavior. Well, what you don't want to do with your website, what you don't want to do with your technology that's actually driving leads and being a major part of the profitability of your company is it's one thing to do an update and have your PC down for half the morning and have to call Microsoft. It's a whole different impact to your business if your website goes down for a day and people can't get to you. Totally different playground. And so when you're looking at a vendor, when you're making that partnership, you want to make sure that you select a vendor where you're not going to have to be on the phone four and five hours calling up this department, that department, this department, that department. You want a vendor partner that has a layer of a project manager for you, a sales rep for you, a account manager for you. Even if that vendor is not perfect, it's still going to save you time your time as a business owner and your time is worth cash. You are probably the most expensive resource in your business and odds are you are not calculating your own time. And so when you're thinking about some of this hardcore technology stuff, you are absolutely right in your thinking that you should not have to learn this stuff. But where a lot of small business owners break apart is they make a partnership decision based on cash. They don't build a bar, they don't make a partnership decision based on how that partner is going to save them time. And time is the biggest cash outlay that small business owners do not calculate in your budget. Content, content, content. Everybody's heard the phrase that content is king. That is still true. I want to explain to you guys about content. There are multiple types of content. And I want to take a minute and I want to break this down. And anybody who has to make a decision on a website, whether you're in a digital marketing partnership or you're doing it all yourself, Please take notes. As I said before, the formula to ranking on Google already gave that to you. So let me give you another layer, right? We're talking about layers. Content is broken down into two basic constructs. You can write content just for search engine optimization. And then you can write content for customer engagement. Let me explain what those mean, because as a normal business owner, your expectation would be that you get both. And sometimes you're not getting both. So if you're not educated about the distinction of types of content, your expectation, like we talked about in mindset, your expectation is going to be off. You're not going to understand. You're not going to be happy. And you're not going to be confident when you go out to the marketplace and you talk about, please go to my website. Because what sells you the most is you. And so what our job is as a digital marketing partner for you is we have to equip you with just enough information to make you 100% confident when you step out there to point people to your digital services, to point people to your digital presence. Content for SEO. Here's how you break it down. Grab a pen. 
content for SEO is not going to be that engaging. And I hate to break it down to you, but for your industry, it's even worse. Most consumers, I just replaced my AC unit last summer. So I know exactly what it's like. I'm a single mom and I was just a consumer. And I just want you to know that I did not read a word of content on that person's website, on that company's website that I ended up spending $8,000 with. I didn't read a word of it. And I'm a digital marketer. I absolutely should have read. But when I was in consumer mode, I didn't care what their content said. I searched for AC repair near me. And it brought up four names. And I picked three. And what I picked were who had the best reviews on Google, who came up quick, and then when I clicked on their website, did they answer my questions and give me a path to get my questions answered on the very first page? I didn't go to their blog and read anything. I didn't even go to their AC repair page and read anything. Okay, you guys need to keep me abreast of the time and make sure that I'm on point. Okay, so I'm running out of time. I do wanna offer you guys the opportunity to get a digital marketing analysis from us because we will absolutely go through your website and send it to you in writing. Let's see, okay, so content. Let me finish this up real quick about content because it's very, very important. SEO content. It's going to have cities. It's going to have services. When you look at the content, you're going to be like, why are they put so many cities on my page? It's so that Google can read you. When you write content for engagement, it has to be your voice as the business owner. It has to be you who gives your digital marketing vendor the information to make it unique. And so a lot of times what happens is when you need to get a website implemented, you write content for SEO to get the search to feed the Google dragon first. And then you come back with a phase two content writing project where you go through your pages and you customize them. And you work with that digital marketing partner to make sure it sounds like your voice. On page SEO, I've already talked about that. I'm not going to go into much detail. What I've shared with you already is exactly what you need to know about on-page SEO. Local listings, I'm not going into that right now, but feel free to get an evaluation and set up some sort of conversation with one of us over here at CI Web Group. Social influence, I'm not going to go through that today. We don't have time. Reviews, I did speak about reviews. Look at the formula I gave you. Reviews are number three. If you're not, <clears throat> excuse me, if you don't have a 4.5 review or higher, you're missing money. You're missing clients. Somebody's beating you. And so a big focus for you in 2018 are reviews. And so in closing, please, if you do nothing else for yourself this year, request a digital marketing evaluation so that you can have the truth about what your presence looks like online and where you can spend your budget dollars and where you can focus your attention. Secondly, pick a partner who's gonna have your back, somebody who's gonna to come to the table and give you real information, not just talk to you in techno speak. And it has been amazing to be with you guys today. Thank you so much, Lisa and Catherine, and thank you, everybody. I'd like to open it up, see if anybody has any questions. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Kathy. So just a couple quick reminders. If you have any questions, use your chat box. We'll be happy to answer for you. Uh, there is a post-webinar survey. Definitely feel free to let us know how we did. We do appreciate your feedback. We do have a list of um, other webinar titles provided by CI, CI Web Group. Uh, for Goodman and Amana dealers uh, and distributors. Those are out in partner link. If you need any help locating those recordings, you can always reach out to me at Goodman Partners Network at GoodmanMFG.com. We'll be happy to help. I know partner link is going through some changes uh, in terms of uh, new web development. And um, right now the recordings are out in the, the old site. So let me know if you have any trouble locating those. I'll be happy to help. 
And at this point, I do not have any questions. So I wanted to uh, thank you so much for joining us and ask if there's anything you'd like to say in closing today, Kathy. I just want to thank everybody for giving me the opportunity to have this conversation with you. And I want to invite everyone to make sure that you leverage us and give us the opportunity to, to be a resource for you inside learning about digital marketing. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It was a pleasure to talk with you. And for everyone thank who you. took time out of your busy schedule, we do appreciate your taking time with us today and look forward to talking to you on the next webinar. Thanks so much, thank everybody. You. You're welcome. Thank Have a great you. rest of your day, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.